Official visits officially did not go all that well. We're going to break down the biggest misses from the Badgers football official visits and where do they go from here? Where do they pick up the pieces? All that and more on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm your host, Ryan Herrings. This is Locked On Badgers. Thank you for making this one of your first listens every day as we continue to try to build the Badger community and just talk Wisconsin sports. Uh, let's get into it. Yeah, so uh, official visits, the two big visits, so the, the June 3rd and the June 10th visits, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about how the Badgers did and not that well, right? We're going to talk about the biggest misses, and let's get into it. So let's start with June 3rd. I wanted to break this up. Uh, by by dates, right? So you have June 3rd and June 10th are the two big official visit times for the Wisconsin Badgers football team over the summer. And let's just go through it, right? So the June 3rd visit, you had Taka Curtis, Ashton Sanders, Nate Johnson, Khalil Tate, Joe Crocker, James Duran, Mikhail Gardner, Chris Tarek, Zach Ortworth, Lincoln Kineholtz, and Tyler Jancy. So of those prospects, how did the Badgers do? Let's let's break it down prospect by prospect. Taka Curtis went to USC. That one hurt. That was a, a heart ripper. That 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 one felt like a recruitment the Badgers had an inner inner leg on, could have done well. You know, I, I have it from a source that him playing outside linebacker Wisconsin, he would rather play inside linebacker. So I, I know that hurt Wisconsin, but frustrating. So Tackett Curtis, that's a miss, went to USD. Ashton Sanders, the you know, defensive tackle, pretty athletic guy, went to Cal. Allen's also an uh, unfortunate one. He had apparently a really good official visit, had great energy, seemed to love cheese curds. Would have been a good fit for Wisconsin with Roger Pierce in this class. He went to Cal. Um, he's a California kid, so you kind of get the location, but that's another miss that's tough. Nate Johnson went to BC. I never thought Nate Johnson was a great fit. I, I didn't like his film as much as some other people, but he went to Boston College. Khalil Tate, that one was a killer for me. Uh, Khalil Tate went to Iowa. I, I mentioned when we were talking Khalil Tate, the first time we brought him up, he would be one of my favorite commits in this class. At any point in time in which he committed to Wisconsin, he would have been one of my favorite players in the class. I love his game and his film. Him going to Iowa, we're going to face him. Mm, 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 mm. That's another killer. Him and Tate are just – or him and uh, Tackett are just killers, not getting those dudes. Um, James Durand was on official visit. He was already committed to Wisconsin. Joe Crocker came, ended up committing to Mississippi State, the four-star uh, left tackle, offensive tackle out of Tennessee. Now, there's some a little up in the air whether or not he really was a take at, at the time he committed. Um, there's another one which we're going to talk about actually in this segment as well, committed to Wisconsin. So maybe Crocker wasn't a take, but still a guy on an official visit, ended up going to Mississippi State. Akil Gardner is undecided, but he's not coming to Wisconsin. Enough tea leaves are there. He's a, another defensive tackle, really good player. His film is ridiculous. Uh, sounds like maybe an Oregon player, somewhere along those lines. He's not coming to Wisconsin. Um, Zach Ortworth, Iowa tight end. So that's the second player on this June 3rd official visit list. Wisconsin lost to Iowa, tight end and safety. Both positions Iowa does really well at. But, man, you, it's painful to lose to your Big Ten West brethren that, quite frankly, you've been better than. Um, Lincoln Kineholtz went to Washington. That's the other one on this group. So. This this was a disaster, right? The June third official visits were a disaster. Uh, I mean, there's no other way to put it. And before that visit, those visits, we did uh, a preview show of all the official visits, and I was said, "Listen, this is a great time because we talked ad nauseum about the recruiting department being put together, not put together, how long how long it took, why it took so long." But that was in the past. That's put together now, and this June third. Like this, this first a big official visit was their first chance to step up, and it's not all on them. I get it, but it's it's a reflection, I think, on the the staff and the coaching staff, the the coaches as well, not just the recruiting staff that we did so poorly. Like this is an F. You you almost couldn't do worse than this. The only guy out of this group uh, was Chris Tarek, the the offensive lineman, and a really good player. Like he committed to Wisconsin. That was a bit of a surprise. It sounded like Iowa was leading for him. And his commitment maybe kept Crocker from committing to Wisconsin. We'll never know for sure. 
I'm kind of on the mind you could have taken both. This is a big class. It's it's stagnated a little bit, stagnated a little bit. You can use some bodies, but that's the only guy they got in this this June third visit group that committed to Wisconsin. I mean, it's almost stunningly bad to have that many high level prospects on campus with legitimate interest. Like Wisconsin had legitimate shots at Taka Curtis, Ashton Sanders, Khalil Tate. Um, I wouldn't say Mikhail Gardner. I don't think they really had an in on him, but Kineholtz for sure, Ortworth, like. There's five or six prospects in this group that Wisconsin had a legitimate puncture shot at, and they went one for nine overall. Now, Wisconsin did have a couple, so I'm not counting people that Wisconsin had on campus that were already committed to Wisconsin, like James Duran, the offensive lineman, the interior offensive lineman was on campus June 3rd, but he'd already committed to Wisconsin. Uh, Jancy, Tyler Jancy, the, the really good inside linebacker prospect from Illinois, was on campus for an official visit, but he'd already committed to Wisconsin, right? So... This is this is about as bad as you can get for an official group. And there's some real, real talent here that Wisconsin finished in the top two or top three of that you're talking uh putting the finishing touches on a, a secondary with Khalil Tate. The best prospect Wisconsin has a chance on this cycle with Taka Curtis. You know, uh, another really versatile defense alignment with Ashton Sanders. And to not to do so poorly, man, and the quarterback prospect, like Kineholtz, missing Kineholtz is a huge deal. There's no one else right now that Wisconsin's even in on. And losing him to Washington, again, a school that Wisconsin is a better program than Washington. And they have probably a bigger need for quarterback. And despite all that, and despite getting the first official visit. Mm. You know, the other interesting thing with this is, excuse me, we had John Garcia Jr. on, and he was talking about the importance of who gets the first visit. And for most of these players, Wisconsin got the first visit. And he said that usually bodes well. And even with that kind of inside leg, Wisconsin wasn't able to close the deal. So what does that mean? Who are the biggest losses here? I mean, the three biggest losses easily are Tate, Khalil Tate, the dynamic physical safety that went to Iowa, Tackett Curtis, who may be the only real blue chip prospect Wisconsin is in on this cycle, and Lincoln Kineholtz, the quarterback. You lost. I mean, it's just it's tough to quantify how disappointing this group is. And it's really going to hamper the class because if this is a class where you're talking about if we had just landed Tackett in the quarterback Kynolds well suddenly you have a blue chip player you can hang your hat on it if you're Wisconsin this is going to be a down recruiting cycle no matter what and some of that's not on the coaches right the in-state class isn't very good for high school talent in Wisconsin but if you had Tackett Curtis you could hang your hat on there's a blue chip guy difference maker and if you had your quarterback Lincoln Kynolds you could say and we got our quarterback and then fill in depth around it but without having either of those what do you even hang your hat on in this class right now I I don't even know what where do you point if you're a Wisconsin fan and say no no see it's okay because we knocked that out of the park cornerback maybe I mean Jace Arnold is a really good prospect I don't know it this is a, this is a bad a bad start to the official cycle, right? June third is is a failure. If you have to grade that, you give it an F. I mean that's a, that's an F. It's a failure. It's falling through the the frozen lake and not being able to get out type of a thing. It's a it's a disaster scenario. Yeah, and that's the June third one uh, coming up. We are going to talk about uh, what happened on June tenth and the players that committed didn't commit, and the Badgers got a little bit better coming out of that cycle. So we're going to talk about that next. But first, today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. Um, as you gear for fall, as you gear for fall, you really need to find the right people to help your team and your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster. And LinkedIn is something I've used a ton. It's something I've used professionally to advance my career. I found it to be really the most straightforward, no junk, no gibberish, easy to use, intuitive platform. Uh, for professionals trying to network with in whatever network they are in. Uh, it, you end up with LinkedIn partnering with Locked On. You're able to create a free job post in minutes, reach your network, reach the largest professional network in the world, add your job, and people within LinkedIn's network will reach out to you and get rid of all the pain and all the frustration and all the time wasted of finding people, hiring people. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs every week, 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, everybody. I really want to thank everyone again for making Lockdown Badgers one of your first listens every day. Really, really do appreciate it. And let's get into it. Let's talk about the next big official visit weekend. So we talked about June 3rd. That's an F. 
Uh, that's a disaster weekend. Let's talk June 10th. So June 10th is a little better. It's not as big of a group and doesn't have the, the blue chip Tackett Curtis. But you have Colin Dixon, Jordan Mayer, A.J. Tisdell, Braden Marshall, Roderick, Roderick Pierce, um, Nate White, Justin Taylor, and Jock Puss Keys. Um, now, a couple of these guys were already committed to Wisconsin. Like Keys, the running back out of Ohio, was already committed to Wisconsin. Justin Taylor was already committed to Wisconsin, and Nate White, the in-state back, were already committed to Wisconsin. So those players were already on camp, or were on campus, but they were already committed. Let's look at the players that weren't committed. So you have Colin Dixon, who did end up committing to Wisconsin, the receiver. Jordan Mayer, the edge rusher, who committed to Wisconsin. A.J. Tisdell, cornerback, committed to Wisconsin. And then you had Braden Marshall, who – and the reason I'm doing this show now is Braden Marshall, who is really the last potential realistic get out of this entire grouping of players – announced that he committed to the University of Central Florida, so he's going to UCF. Um, so Wisconsin did pretty well here. They went three out of four. Uh, Braden Marshall, I would argue, is probably the highest rated, maybe the best player of that group, and he's the one not coming. Although I do really like Jordan Mayer. He was a player, um, an edge rusher, outside linebacker, who had been committed to Boston College. He's coming to Wisconsin. That's a good win. And then um, Colin Dixon and A.J. Tisdell are, are definitely solid. They're, they're in that mid-three-star range, solid players. Dixon, a very productive receiver. A.J. Tisdell, um, another quarterback. So Wisconsin has two cornerbacks in the cycle after they added Jace Arnold on the, after the June 17th visits. So, yeah, this you would probably give this a B, a B+. Plus. Uh, it's hard to grade it any lower than that, considering there wasn't a lot of players there. The, again, Braden Marshall, they lost. There, there is discussion whether or not he was a take after A.J. Tisdell uh, committed. I, I'm going to give you my take on that one in a second, but let me wrap up on this, the June 10th. So June 10th was pretty good, and then there was a much smaller group on June 17th, which was uh, Tretch Kakahuna, Jace Arnold committed out of that one. So I'm going to kind of lump these two together. Wisconsin definitely did better than what they did on the June third official visits, right? But you couldn't do worse. So all in all, if you were if you were to combine all of this together, the entire official visit cycle, it would be you'd be hard pressed to say the Badgers did better than a C, right? Getting some some really good players on the tenth and the seventeenth, specifically uh, Jordan Mayer and Jace Arnold, definitely helps buoy the class. But they just came up so empty from that first big weekend that. It's hard to recover from that in the matter of a month. Now, there's a lot of time left in the recruiting cycle, a lot still to happen, but that's a tough one. Um, I want to talk a little bit about a narrative with Braden Marshall. And there's there's some discussion about, well, did Wisconsin fill up at cornerback? Let me let me give you my take on this. And and that's the reason they didn't get him, right? That's the reason Braden Marshall went to UCF. It's because Wisconsin said no, we're full. I'm just gonna, this is only my opinion on this. I don't have any inside take on this one. I'm going to tell you, I think that's BS. I think that's straight BS. I, first of all, cornerback is the hardest position alongside probably quarterback receiver. Cornerback's right in there in the hardest positions for Wisconsin to recruit. So difficult, right? And here you have a three borderline four star cornerback in Braden Marshall. And we're supposed to believe that Wisconsin, a school that just took three transfers at the cornerback position because they needed bodies is telling Brady Marshall, no, we're full. We have two corners. I don't buy it. I don't buy that narrative. I And if I were you, I wouldn't buy it either. Now, that doesn't mean they – that doesn't mean Wisconsin's putting the full-court press on Braden Marshall. At the end of the day, maybe they wanted him and they were trying to back burner him a little bit because they were getting a little tight at corner. Maybe there's someone else they're looking at. But don't believe the narrative being pushed around that they're full at the cornerback spot. I don't buy it. I don't think it's true. And yeah, I, I just think this is a big class, right? There's going to be over 20 recruits in this class when it's said and done. It's a class that's missed on a lot of players, right? What I'm saying is they, they are probably not turning away a really good athlete at a tough position for Wisconsin to recruit because they said, no, we're full. That's probably a spot they'll take. A, they're probably going to take a third corner in this class. And if it's not Braden Marshall, it'll probably be someone else. An offer just went out today at cornerback. So they're not full at the spot. That's not the reason Braden Marshall didn't come here. I don't know what the reason is. And like I said, it could totally 100% be they either really cooled on Braden Marshall or they said they tried to back burner him and told, you know, tried to get him to delay his recruitment a little bit. But it's not because they're full at cornerback and they said we're only taking two. I just don't buy it. I don't think it makes any sense. And especially doesn't make sense for a program that has such a difficult time recruiting cornerbacks that if they had one ready to, ready to join the program, I don't think they would have turned them away. So, yeah, that's that's kind of my official visit overall recap. And 
I think it's got to make you a little nervous as a Badger fan because what what has Wisconsin traditionally done really well in the summer? They've traditionally sold their official visitors, right? These are players coming on campus, coming on campus because they're they're legitimately interested in Wisconsin, and most of these players haven't been to Madison. They haven't gotten that full experience of Madison. Madison's gorgeous in the summer. Wisconsin's great in the summer. So these players coming up, you can sell them on all of the good. You can really highlight all the positives of Wisconsin. And to close on such a small percentage, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that even happened. And because it, it hasn't happened in the past traditionally with Paul Chris. So it could be just a fluke. But it's definitely something if you're a Badger fan and you really follow recruiting, you got to raise your eyebrows at a little bit and be at least a little concerned with with what happened. Um, coming up and next, we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about football recruiting, kind of go deeper into what maybe this means and, and what's going to happen next for Wisconsin on the recruiting front. And, you know, if, is it fair to really point any fingers here? Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one source for all of your sports betting needs and information. And it's an easy to use website. There's a reason we use that locked on. And it's a great place for futures. Um, you know, we've talked about Wisconsin over under 8.5, but football, baseball, basketball, there's action in every sports area. And you can put all that action into Bet Online, use it to test your sports knowledge, do it responsibly, but it's a lot of fun. The website's really intuitive, easy to use, and it's also a great spot for uh, mobile like uh, online casino games, blackjack, roulette, great um, spot if you're a sports fan, if you want sports news, they they have all the latest sports news there as well, not just betting information. And it, it helps you understand the game better, seeing how lines move, how teams are favored. It, it gives you a deeper understanding and insight as a sports fan. So I highly recommend it as a fan. It's a lot of fun if you want to test your sports knowledge. Go to the, mo- or go to the website today, use your mobile device, learn more about the trends and actions. Bet online where the game starts. Thank you guys again for making Locked On Badgers just your first listen every day. I really, really do appreciate it. Let's continue talking Badgers football recruiting, uh, and let's look at it from a big picture standpoint. So I, I've kind of been really, I, I've been really critical of the official visits, how poorly they've done. I think that's fair, but I want to let's zoom out a little bit and take a holistic, big picture look at the class. Right? It's it still has thirteen players in it, and I was talking to John Garcia, the Sports Illustrated recruiting director, and I asked him. And, and this never made it to a show because we had some technical difficulties, but we were just having a discussion. I said, is it too early to panic um, for the Badgers having 13 commits, but having missed on a lot of guys? He said, no, 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 no. He straight up told me, no, it is way too early to panic for Wisconsin. There's there's commits and there, there's classes out there that have four or five recruits, like pretty from big time programs. He mentioned Auburn. He said, those schools should be panicking. Wisconsin, you got 13 commits. You got a lot of time. And you're able to sell a great game day experience in Madison. So from his standpoint, I think at, as fans and I do this, I think a lot of fans do this. Sometimes we're so zoomed in that we we see the, the micro, but we never really see the macro, right? And there is a lot of time, right? There is a lot of time. And it. I think two things can be true here. We, we can definitely acknowledge the start of this recruiting cycle has been pretty poor. Like it has. And, and if people are going to say it's not, I, I think they have their head in the sand. And there's fans that are just always going to say it's fine. Trust the coaches. Well, listen, the coaches offered all these players they didn't get. So if you're trusting the coaches, trust that they didn't get the players they wanted. Like it's all right to acknowledge that. Uh, but it's also all right. The, ha- the other side of that coin is it's also all right to acknowledge. There's a lot of time left. The season hasn't started and they're going to have a couple opportunities to get a lot of prospects, you know, on campus and, and sell that. So Am I frustrated? Yeah. Am I panicked? I'm not panicked. I'm a little worried in spots, but I think there's a lot of time left. And I, I, I'm sure the coaches understand the urgency of the situation, having missed several players. The other thing I, w- I would keep in mind, and I think this is is very likely, is the Badgers are going to approach flip season a little differently than they have in the past. And flip season, obviously, we talk about going into other teams' recruiting lists and, and taking some players from them. I think we're going to see that this year. A lot of the quarterbacks are gone. We talked to John Garcia Jr. about this. A lot of the, the quarterbacks the Badgers would target are gone. Look for them to target some, some lesser schools, especially if they have a strong start to the season. If they're putting together um, a better offense under Bobby Ingram, they're going to be able to sell that to recruits. Then they're going to be able to go into schools. And I'm just throwing some random names out here, but an Eastern Michigan, a Temple, you know, a Rutgers. Any, there's so many schools beneath Wisconsin in the college football food chart. Wisconsin's going to have to be more aggressive, 
flipping prospects this year just because they haven't done as well at the high school ranks. But I think they're going to do that. And I think they're going to find some success there. I'd be willing to bet, and write this down, we'll see how it plays out. I'd be willing to bet the quarterback they end up getting ends up being a flip. That That's what I think. And I think they're going to end up flipping three or four other guys potentially. So now you're up to, if you flip, let's say four guys, you're up to 17. And in the course of the year, there's going to be some late risers. There's always players that emerge as the season goes on. So you'd add another three or four late blooming high school prospects. And there's your 20, 21 kids in the class. So I, I don't think it's ideal. I don't think there's a path or a road from where Wisconsin is right now for it to reach an elite or a great recruiting cycle. But I think there's a path or a road for it to be a, a solid recruiting cycle. To do that, they're going to have to flip some players. They're going to have to find some late late emergers. And they're going to, have, quite frankly, have to hold off a couple programs too. Like there is... No, there, there's some smoke with Jacquez Keys in Ohio State. I don't think it's going to happen, but they're going to have to hang on to him, especially if Ohio State puts the press on. So that's where I'm at with this. Too early to panic, yes, but not too early to be disappointed. The official visits were mostly a failure, especially the June 3rd. That's one of the worst performances you can have with a, a group of really good official visitors. But they did rebound a little bit better, the staff, on the 10th and the 17th. Picked up a good couple good cornerback prospects. Um if I had to say the, the the most painful losses, I mean, it's Tackett Curtis and Lincoln Kineholtz. I talked about that a little in segment one, but th those two are just brutal. Like you would have had your quarterback and your blue chip guy to hang hang your hat on for this class. Not having either of those in place, it really kills the star power and it leaves you nothing at the most important position at this moment. Like I said, I expect the quarterback to be a flip. I think that'll happen in season, but we'll see. Until then. Uh, we're going to we're gonna continue this conversation in the upcoming days. Got a lot of fun content coming out. Fall camp is coming around the corner, so a lot of football stuff. I need to get some basketball stuff out too, which I've been meaning to do. i got some good basketball shows coming up. So really appreciate everybody listening. Really, really do appreciate the support. Uh, when you're done here, go check out Locked On Big Ten with um, Nate Dickinson as he takes you around the conference, gets you caught up on all the news notes from Wisconsin and everyone else in the Big Ten. Appreciate everyone listening, and we'll talk to you later.